Well, thank you everyone for joining us here on May Sessions. Um, this is our last leadership session that we're, we're having um, during this whole May Sessions. And um, tonight we're gonna be talking about uh, what it looks like to be a value-based leader. Um, and I'll explain a little bit more about what that looks like here in a moment. Uh, but before we get to things, I just wanna give you guys an understanding of how tonight is sort of gonna, gonna roll out. So, um, there's going to be a lot of conversation happening tonight, uh, a little bit of teaching and then conversation. Um, Janelle and Mike are here with us tonight, and possibly another um, Natasha might show up a little bit later on, so um, uh, we'll see if that, if that uh, happens. Um, and then Kirsten is also here tonight, and um, uh, Kirsten is specifically going to be doing a, um, an exercise, uh, like a values exercise to decipher what her values are. And so she's going to be sort of in the background doing this exercise while we're having a conversation. And then at the end, we're going to pull her in and figure out uh, what her values are, what you came up with, why those are your values, where you see those expressed, all that kind of stuff. So that should be pretty fun at the end. So before we jump into things, um, I just want to give you all a chance to sort of introduce yourself, um, who you are, um, because you're all staff, part of the church, what you do. And, uh, and maybe just tell us a little bit about what your life is looking at these days. Um, so, uh, Mike, why don't we start with you? How about that? Hi. Right. Yep. My name is Mike Thiessen. Uh, I'm at Emmanuel doing men's ministry. Uh, I'm there quarter time. So that's my quarter time uh, job. And then full time, I work at EG Penners. Been there for 25 years doing that. Um, and yeah, during this time, it's been strange. Uh, done some yeah. work from home uh with from eg's done a lot of work from home uh, and now slowly start moving back into the office uh so doing that while steph's doing homeschooling with the uh, with our three girls at home right. and so yeah it's been it's been strange right uh yeah. working from home working from the office homeschooling so a bit of everything yeah cool <clears throat> how about you janelle i'll pick on you next uh yeah so i am janelle hire and i work with uh e-groups here at emmanuel church and I work with integrating people. So if you want to get connected into an e-group, um, yeah, you would, I would be the one that you would contact and I would try and set you up with an e-group. And uh, so during this time, it has also been really weird for me. Yeah. Um, so I think it's I've, safe to say for everyone across the board at this yeah. point in time. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> Standard <laughs> answer. There's not a whole lot going on. Um, <laughs> So I've just been doing a bunch of projects around the house and doing stuff with my family a lot and painting and I've been reading a lot actually. So that's yeah. kind of exciting. Nice. That's cool. Anything in particular that you're reading that's blowing your mind? That's really awesome. Um, well, I have been digging a little bit more into spiritual disciplines book. Oh yeah. Right. Which has been awesome. Cool. And I also um, have started the Hunger Games series. Okay. Interesting. So it's super random, but yeah. Something that's, okay. that's not like super deep and have to think a lot about. Sure. So. Fair enough. Cool. All right. Last but not least. Uh, yeah, I'm Kirsten Friesen. Um, <laughs> I'm the executive assistant here at the church, so um, helping Brendan out with a bunch of stuff, doing admin stuff on staff. Um, so yeah, I've only been here since January, so kind of new, still figuring everything out, but, and then throwing everything else into the mix now um, has been interesting, but it's been a good um, time, I guess, of learning and growing in that, so yeah. Cool. That's cool. Um, well, let's, uh, let's get you off and running and doing your, your values evaluation. But just before you do, I just want to ask a quick question. Can you sort of just quickly explain what you're doing? What's in front of you there? Um, so everyone kind of has a little bit of an idea of just what's going on. Okay. Yeah, for sure. So I have a couple like, um, notes here. So it says like not valuable, valuable, very valuable. And then I have some cards with different, I guess, possible values, like things that right. you could value um, with little descriptions. And so I'll be going through and ranking them um, in the different categories, I guess. Yeah. And then kind of coming up with some lists of what I find important, kind yeah. of the middle and what isn't yeah. super important to me. I guess, yeah. So. yeah. And I would encourage you as you go through this, just a couple recommendations. Um, try not to get too bogged down with like intense details about 
how this, you know, value possibly works itself into your life. Um, try to work through it pretty briskly. Um, and I think if you get stuck, uh, always go back to the question, like, what, what am I really about? Like, what am I just really, really about? Like, what do I want to be defined by? If I was to look back at the end of my life, like, what do I want to be known for kind of thing? So, um, and if you have any questions, obviously you can chime in, uh, cause this is going to be a very conversational. So, Sounds um, good. and then obviously my name is Scott Marble and I'm the discipleship <laughs> pastor here at Emmanuel. And, um, and, uh, yeah, I love to do these kinds of things. Um, one of my biggest values is, uh, to empower people. And, um, so I just love teaching. I love being able to, to bring content to people like this. So let me tell you a little bit about the genesis of why I think value-based leadership is so important. And then I want to start with a couple caveats. One being, I recognize that the scriptures, the Bible right here, um, that this is an incredibly important, um, foundational piece to every Christian's life. And our values should be foundational to what is in this book. Um, and so as, as Christians, when we develop our worldview, how we think, um, how we make decisions, it's going to come down to this ultimately as the final authority in our life. But built on top of that, God's given us sort of personalities. He's given us giftings. He's given us um, uh, even like spiritual giftings, I'm talking. But he's given us uh, just a, a little bit of a, um, a fingerprint print as to who we are in our personalities. And it's sort of built on the foundation of scripture. And, uh, and I, say, I think values is one of the best descriptions or best ways to get at what sort of makes us or helps us or informs us when we're making decisions, when we're maybe up against the wall or in a corner on stuff, or when we're trying to decide life's big directions and whatnot. So this is why I think this is important. So many years ago, when I was working with Youth of the Mission, um, I would work with uh, students who were coming to do what was called the Discipleship Training School. These students were often young, so they were still trying to form an understanding of who they were and what they were all about. And, uh, and there was a couple of students in particular that stood out to me that I really understood why values is so important. One of them I remember was a student who we had these conversations about what they should do following their discipleship training school. Should they go to school? And I don't know why these two options were stuck in their head, but should they go to school for becoming a worship leader? Or should they go to school for becoming a pastor? And that was the only two directions in their mind that they could think about at that point in time. And so they began to, what I would say, uh, go through a time of turmoil because it was this thing where they were constantly trying to figure out what God's will was for them. You know, should they choose A or B? They had their life in these very defined boxes and, um, and it began to be mostly a very painful time for them. But they never asked the question, this person never asked the question, what, am I, what do I value in life? Do I even value doing ministry like what a pastor is called to, shepherding people, um, helping people, um, helping to spiritually grow people? Do I even value that? Do I even, is that really what my life to be about? Or do I really even value music, creativity, worship? Do I actually have a heart for worship? Is that the thing that really grips me? Am I even good at it? And so um, it just became about these two options and less about, you know, what have I been designed to do? What do I actually value inside of me? The second occasion was with another fellow. And funnily enough, I was doing this school in, in Turner Valley, Alberta, but this student was actually from Steinbeck um, and, uh, and they were my students. And uh, this particular individual um, really, they, they had this idea that they wanted to become a counselor. So Janelle, you can probably identify with this because uh, Janelle is, is also on that track in life as well to, to get into counseling. But they had zero people skills. They had zero passion for people. In fact, they hated being around people altogether. They wanted nothing to do with people. Hmm. And we had one of our speakers come in, this person, he was like uh, trying to, to, to actually describe to the speaker like, oh, I, I wanted to go into counseling and, and all that. And the speaker kind of looked at him and was like, well, do you like people? Like, do you value people? Do you like, do you want value helping people? Like any of those things? Like, not really. It's like, why in the world would you want to become a counselor then? And I think it was probably the first time he actually like connected like, oh, I don't necessarily have values that are connected with this thing that I'm trying to, to go for. Maybe I need to do some reevaluation in my life. So I think it's important for us to sit down 
and ask ourselves some questions before we get too far into this. Um, oh, I forgot to show this video. I'm going to show it really quick. So here we are. We're indoors and we're sitting here on Zoom and we've been sitting on Zoom a lot lately. But I just wanted to show a quick video of my daughter because this is what she gets to do right now and she's having a whole lot of fun doing it. Hopefully you can hear this. Yeah, so she's having a good old time there on the trampoline outside. <laughs> so I, anyways, I know that's cheesy, but I just thought I'd share that because I mean, <laughs> that's awesome. That's where we, that's where we all want to be in life, right? Is having oh, that, yeah. kinda, that kind of joy. <laughs> yeah. um, all right. So jumping in here, um, I want to ask you guys just to kick off our conversation. What's... Um, What's one of the hardest decisions that you've seen someone make and how do they go about making it? So just exploring your world here, your experience with life so far, what are some of the hardest decisions that you had to see someone make and how do you think they deciphered how they made it? Yeah, uh, you're uh, go to know. Yep. Okay. <laughs> um, in thinking about this question, I was like, I don't even know, comprehend right now, but yeah. I just thought about like a decision that I've even had to make in life. Mm -hmm. And uh, just even my track of like, what do I want to do uh, in life? And I originally went to school to become a nurse because mm -hmm. um, the my entire life I was like, I'm going to be a nurse. I'm going to be a nurse. But it was like more of like a, a sense of security. Okay. Rather than... Uh, do I actually want to become a nurse? Uh, mm -hmm. And so I actually went to, to school for that. But in my year of being at university, um, I took a New Testament course and that just kind of like opened up my uh, longing and desire to know more history and know more about God. Mm -hmm. um, and so just kind of like realizing my um, values of like, do I value more of like my relationship with God and, mm -hmm. and growing in that, or do I value mm -hmm. security yeah. and like my own security, uh, not allowing God to provide for me. Yeah. Um, so I just dropped everything and just went to YWAM. Cool. Uh, so so just, just to like go crazy. back, that was sort of a shift in your life there. Hey, that was sort of a discovery moment. Oh yeah. Huge shift. Yeah. Um, and just like realizing that, um, uh, security in a job is not necessarily something that I really need to focus on in life. Okay. Yeah. Um, and just value more of like um, personal growth, I think more and like um, being kind of like the person that um, God wants for me, I think. I don't yeah. know. I have to say that, but yeah. Yeah. Cool. How about you, Mike? Uh, yeah. Thinking about this, <clears throat> Just one for, uh, I thought that was a really hard decision for some friends of ours, was to go into the mission field um, with their three kids that are not young anymore. Yeah. And that decision to to pick up and go, um, that was, a, I think, a tough decision for them yeah. uh, to leave the comforts of home and to go to another country and, uh, and go to the mission field with their kids being, yeah, not, you know, in a difficult age maybe to try that and to do that. Um, so I, that was definitely, I think, a tough decision. And uh, I have so much respect for them and how they went about the process. Uh, I think it was awesome to see them. Yeah, it's encouraging to see somebody make a, a, such a huge decision to move across the world with their kids. And it came down to a simple matter of they had a skill set uh, that could fill, fulfill a role. Uh, they knew what mm -hmm. their gifts were. Mm -hmm. um, they, knew, they know what scripture says about, uh, about going out. And it was just, yeah, it was just that. Scripture says we need to go. They have giftings uh, and skill set that fit the, the role that they that they looked into. Um, and obviously they prayed about it a lot, but and, and they just moved forward. Yeah. That's awesome that you brought that up because I, I know the couple you're referring to. And it, it really is a genuinely inspiring story of the value of missions or mm -hmm. the value of reaching people, evangelism, whatever you whatever drives them like that to value over a lot of other comforts and maybe things yeah. that they might have to give up in order to see that. So that's, I'm glad you yeah. brought that up because that's just a great example. Yeah. Um, I've, I've also had the, the privilege, you know, YWAM was an organization um, that was based on values. And over time um, they've had different 
values. Like I, I think there was 21 values when I was in, in YWAM. I just recently printed off the latest YWAM sort of value structure. And um, it looks like they have now 18. So they kind of whittle it a, a down a little bit, which I think is completely appropriate with an organization and different seasons of an organization or even our own life. We're going to sort of fluctuate a little bit in our values. Um, obviously, I don't value singleness like I did, you know, when I was single, like obviously I value now my marriage and my family. So like, you know, values can change over time. One of the things I wanted to point out on here um, was this value of, uh, um, of being team oriented was a big value that I really learned from, from YWAM. And, uh, and I hope that a lot of things that I do um, spurts from the, act, the fact that I, I saw teams as a really uh, valuable part of doing ministry and empowering people. And um, I always kept this saying in my back pocket for, for moments like this, but, um, but uh, alone we can go fast, but together we can go far. And I really saw that value work itself out over time, working in teams with YWAM. So I, I really appreciate my time with YWAM and the values that it instilled in me. And one of the leaders that I'm going to call on um, was actually the base director of YWAM Turner Valley, Andre Braun. And one of the things that I will always remember him uh, as being a proponent of was uh, just valuing scripture so highly as an informative thing in his life to the point where, and this wasn't like a, um, it wasn't like a superstitious thing, but Andre never put his Bible on the ground. Um, and so he, outwit, he, like if he was sitting down and he had his Bible near him, he put it on a chair or in his bag, but he never put his Bible on the ground. There, for him, there was something internally that was sort of like a, um, just like a, a respect for scripture that, that, that was like an outworking of it. And again, it wasn't something superstitious. It was just a high value on scripture and it, and it playing itself out. So let me ask you guys a question. Um, have you ever worked for an organization, a business, a corporation, or whatever it was um, that had values? And if so, what was some of your favorite values? What do those look like? Yeah, I worked back in in high school, which was a long time ago. Uh, we won't we won't worked, we won't say any numbers right now. <laughs> no, no, that's fine. Uh, I worked at uh, at Corey Oaks at the golf course, yeah. and uh, Corey Oaks back then when it first opened, I think that was I worked the second year it opened up. I think it was, um, and there had huge emphasis on and on value on service. Okay. That was what they wanted to distinguish themselves at that time. They wanted to be a golf course that. Uh, that was different from this area, at least, and served people really well. And I worked as the bag drop kid. Uh, okay. People would come, come and drive up, and I would take their clubs out of their trunk. Uh, I would clean them for them. I'd put them on their golf cart for them. I'd give them a ride to the parking lot, pick them up from the parking lot, uh, run in and get them food if they needed. Like whatever yeah, okay. people asked for, that's what I had to do for them. But it was service oriented, um, and at that time, it definitely kind of set them apart, and it was really neat uh, to be part of that. Cool. That's cool. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm still pretty young, so I haven't been a part of a lot of organizations. <laughs> I feel a little jab at Mike there on that comment. I'm just yeah, saying. Yeah. <laughs> That's all right. Um, but I guess one of the organizations that I've been with the longest would be uh, a and um, yeah. And I would say that they definitely value uh, like their customers and service as well um and just like even how they um yeah just value like in our service times in bringing food to table for people like like serving the elderly i think there's just a huge important on, importance on that um but even just like in w as general like in in a bigger picture like giving back to the community at least like once a year doing their MS day and things like that. I just, I love their, their value on service. And I think that has instilled a huge uh, value in me as well. Um, just working there. Hmm. Hmm. That's cool. I also worked at a golf course, Mike, for oh, nice. a total, a total of one day. Um, <laughs> <laughs> because uh, so interesting enough, um, where I come from in Michigan is uh, very, uniquely wealthy pocket of the state and even the country. There's a, an incredible amount of wealth 
in the area of Petoskey. So much so that there's these, um, there's sort of gated communities of really, really multi-million dollar homes uh, all over the place. And so I worked at a golf course for a total number of one day um, <laughs> where I got treated so badly by the sort of upper class people in our town that, um, that I quit right away. Because uh, so the con contextually here is, so I grew up extremely poor in the midst of all of that. And, um, and I had a high value on people over what their worth was. And I really felt like uh, to them, I was just, uh, I was all about just what uh, an extension of their needs or extension of just serving them. I wasn't actually seen as a person and I did not like that feeling. So I lasted about one day and decided that I don't want my life to be about um, this kind of status. Um, I want my life to be about walking amongst the poor and, and sort of communing with them. So, so that's, yeah. Um, <laughs> so I, I think in an organization, there's one of three things happening, or maybe some of these are coinciding. Um, either one, uh, there are values in your organization. So um, your values are not equal to your actions. So what you say on the wall in terms of your values aren't actually happening in the organization. Two, um, you're not actually aware of your values. So maybe there's some values in your organization that have actually become a part of the culture that you don't actually know. And, and, uh, and that could be both positive and negative when I say that as well. And then three, um, you're just confident in your values. You know when you understand your values and you, you have a, a culture that's built around those values or all, all those things could be happening at, at the same time too. Um, and so let's flip a question back to us again. Do you know of any organizations or people that fit into these three categories? Have you experienced any of these categories in your life? And how does it make you feel about that organization or that person over time? What have you experienced in that? So I'll, how about I'll pick on you at first, Janelle, this time. Uh, I can't specifically think of anything, but just like knowing that um, if an organization that has values and actually acts on them, it makes mm -hmm. me like as a consumer respect them more and actually want to, uh, yeah. like my business will go to them. Um, right. If they don't necessarily have values or like act on their values, I just feel like they're not necessarily a unified organization. Um, I would not be drawn necessarily to them. <laughs> right. I would say yeah. How about you, Mike? Yeah, definitely. After 25 years, a long time, like I said, of working in uh, at one place, mm -hmm. uh, I've experienced all three of those multiple times throughout the year, right? With with suppliers and vendors that I deal with, and there's certain ones definitely that uh, there's there's one local one here that's in Saint Anne, a little company uh, that are owned by a few brothers, and those guys. Um, the, the service that they give uh, their, and, and their values, their family, like uh, their family uh, and they rely on service. They're a small little operation, but uh, those guys will bend over backwards for you. They'll do everything for you. They are what their values are yeah. uh, and they, and they act that way. Um, yeah. They back up what they do. Uh, they serve you well. Um, and yeah, as, as a result of that, you go back to them over and over and over again. Yeah. Uh, and then I have suppliers that, um, I deal with a lot of frustration throughout the week um, that are not about their values. They, I, mm. I know what their values say, mm. uh, but during the week when I deal with them, they don't treat their, me, you know, at all that way. Yeah. Um, they, whatever it may be, there's story after story about that, but yeah, so it's pretty clear when a companies that I deal with, whether they hold to their values or they don't. Mm. Um, and like Janelle, it's pretty simple like where me as a supplier buying something where i'm buying from i buy from the guy that i trust that sticks to his values uh and and that's where you bring your business yeah that's cool um i like to point out just in the last um year uh as staff uh brendan our executive pastor has sort of led us through um creating and forming internal values which has actually been really cool because uh it's actually a practical shift from us probably have been being in the category of uh, maybe in some ways not being aware of some of our values um, or even having some values and maybe that weren't actually equal with our actions. 
Um, and so it's cool that like what Brendan did was he sort of helped us identify some values that we wanted to see expressed in our staff culture. And I don't know if you guys remember, but we had all these challenges around them. We had like boards, we were writing stuff down and we were affirming people and they got all these fun activities surrounded around it just to sort of help enforce uh, and uh, get the values into the, the culture of our, our church. And, um, but also, I think it also helped to sharpen sort of the pencil on what actually is our values and what isn't, because I think before we kind of, you know, we all had different ways of how we operated and valued both uh, good and bad, but they weren't necessarily cohesive at the same time. So now we can say, you know, definitely, you know, yeah, like this, this is our values. This is how it's expressed. This is what we, we do kind of thing. So I think that's really cool. Um, so I think uh, this is a really critical question because when it comes to our values, um, that sort of is the, the, the driving thing in our life. And so uh, it helps sort of string our life together when we have a, a good understanding of our values and we operate at them, especially at the core of who we are. And it answers that question at the core of who we are as well and helps advise us into where we're going. And uh, it also can help us to sort of answer this question, like what kind of sort of hills do we want to die on when it comes to uh, what we feel about uh, the world? So for instance, let me, let me just say, you know, as a, as a Christian, as a Bible believing Christian, one of the sort of hills that I'll always die on is my value for scripture. Like I'll always go to bat for the authority of scripture, the value of scripture, um, the application of scripture, the study of scripture in my life. Like that's a value that I have that is just intrinsic to who I am as a Christian. And if I didn't have that value as a Christian, you know, it's, it would be hard to say that I, I practice Christian uh, Christianity. Um, and, and there's some other values in my life that are, that are like that as well. For instance, one of the things that for me drove me into 12 years of doing missions is a value for evangelism. I value evangelism so highly, not necessarily just the act of evangelism. I just, I value people meeting Jesus, the real Jesus in a real way. And so much so that I was willing to, you know, live on donations, uh, travel to some of the, the most horrific places in the world you can think of, get myself into some of the most difficult, dangerous situations. Um, all, all because I wanted people to know who Jesus was. That was a, we already talked about a missionary, uh, a couple that we know, but that was a value that I was going to, my life was going to sort of die on a hill. And I still do that today. And, and you know, even though I'm in a, a pastor in a, a local church, you know, I still value people meeting Jesus. It looks differently now, but I'm always and want to always fight for that value as, as much as possible. Um, and I think also too, when we look back at our life, it's, it's one thing to kind of say, uh, what do we want to be known for? What's that thing that, you know, we would love people to know is the, the, the thing that drove us. Um, and so I just want to ask you guys a question here. I'm going to flip a, another question to you. Um, do you guys know what you stand for? Um, and do you know what you want to be known for? So in your time with me, we've talked about values and whatnot. Tell me about some of your values and how they get expressed in your life and what they sort of look like. The best of your abilities. <laughs> uh, I guess that's a, that's a tough one because w what I want and, and how I am doing it is <laughs> don't always match up, right? Yeah, um, sure. Yeah, how do, you, so, how do you balance that right. tension? Yeah, so what I would want to be known for one day, like you say, if uh, you know, when I'm when I'm gone, what do I, like, what do I want my kids to know, like people to know about me? Yeah, is that yeah. A, I kind of that I loved Christ and I loved others with that love, and and again, it, am I doing that? Man, no, it's it's hard and it's a struggle uh, to love fully and to love unconditionally. Um, uh, but I want I want to I think Scott, obviously, you know, like we've we've talked lots about evangelism for both of us is a big part of our life. Uh, sharing the gospel and and I want people, my kids, I want people to say he wasn't a, uh, ashamed ever uh, to share the gospel with somebody. He wasn't a, ashamed uh, of who he was, what he believed, um, and he tried to his best abilities to love others with uh, with how Christ loved him. Um, again, am I am I doing well at that? No, probably not. 
uh, but I'm, that's a goal like to work that I'm working towards the value that I want of uh, being um, not being selfish uh, with my love uh, Stephanie, especially loving unconditionally mm. um, and treating others with, with dignity, with respect uh, because everybody's made in God's image. Mm. Um, I, I want, yeah, I want my kids to know, like, for example, yeah, I, I loved people and it didn't matter status. It didn't matter what, what they're, you know, how much they're worth. Mm-hmm. They were made in God's image and they were, and they were, they're valuable. So, oh yeah, that's maybe a really long and confusing answer, but that's mm-hmm. what I want to be known for. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I'm kind of the, the exact same way. It's just like what I want and what I actually like am currently. I don't know if that's necessarily always lines up, but like, mm-hmm. Yeah, I, d- I definitely want to be someone who <clears throat> loves Jesus um, and, like, wants my life to reflect the life of Jesus um, and just, like, showing compassion to people. I value relationships a lot, and I deeply care for people. Um, and I want to be known for someone who's just um, always available and always, um, yeah, available and hospitable, just mm. um, constantly wanting people to feel welcomed and just like Mm -hmm. I want to serve people with all that I can Mm -hmm. um treat them also with the same love and respect as as people that I truly and deeply care about and Mm -hmm. I want to treat all people with the same um love and respect and so Mm -hmm. that's that's something that I want to stand for and want to be known for yeah what do you guys think I'm going to pitch you a bit of a curveball here we haven't necessarily talked about this previous to this. What do you guys think when some of your values are in conflict with, you know, what you actually do in life or maybe that you're, you're required to do? How do you reconcile those two worlds together? Do you have any thoughts or experiences um, that you would share in terms of, you know, or maybe even some tensions that you felt in your life of how to balance those two things or what you should do in those kinds of situations? Yeah, I would say, uh, personally, I, uh, I tend to beat myself up a lot when, when I'm not, um, when I'm not fulfilling what I feel I should be as far as a follower of Christ, when I'm not mm. sharing the gospel as much as I think I should be personally, um, mm. when I'm maybe not, yeah, fulfilling some of the things that I, I that my goals or like my values I want to be, uh, I've had a tendency to, to beat myself up and to, um, be hard on myself for that and to feel guilt. I think that's been a large part of my past is, is guilt mm. for not doing those things. So um, I'm trying to learn uh, grace that, that um, I'm trying to understand that, uh, that God loves me. Uh, I'm created in his image and I'm wonderful uh, to him. He loves me no matter what I, I do. He loves me. And um, so I'm trying to, I'm, I'm, I'm working through that. I, that's a constant struggle to, to, to me to try to get to that grace part. And um, I'm reading a book on the prodigal son, which I, th- I thought a great question asked was uh, as the first son who, who leaves home, where are you in that journey? Are you, are you the son that's running away? And are you the son that, that later on recognizes he needs to come home mm-hmm. and is now trying to think of reasons for your father to accept you? which is some of the stuff I would struggle with today, like trying to come up with reasons for my father to accept me, God to love me. I have to do these things. Or am I at the last stage where I just know that my father loves me and, and I can accept that love. So yeah, I would say that sorry again, long answer, but That's trying fine. to, trying to understand um, and accept God's love for me and, mm-hmm. and, and to be easier on myself because God loves me and mm-hmm. just trying to accept that and, and, and accept the grace and accept the love and, and just to be thankful and rest in his love, even when I'm not perfect and when I'm not doing things well, Mm -hmm. uh, to rest in his love because it's enough. So. Mm. Cool, Mike. Thank you for that answer. Janelle, any thoughts? Um, I would say something along the lines of Mike also just kind of uh, realizing that, yeah, I don't exactly care deeply for each person the same as I should. Um, and just realizing that I'm also a very self-reflective person. So usually after the fact, <laughs> I'm always like, ah, I didn't really care for that person the way I should have. Uh-huh. Um, 
but just kind of like, yeah, having grace on yourself and, and just, uh, kind of like praying and hoping to do better next time. And like remembering in those moments of like, oh, there's someone that, I don't know, that's maybe a coworker that's really hard to get along with or something. And just praying before you get to that, that point and praying throughout the day of just being like, okay, God, like help me to treat this person with the same love <clears throat> that um, I care for other people and that you would want to uh, mm. want for me to do as well. Yeah. Yeah. I think I would say similar to you guys. I think, again, on a personal level, there has to be grace for oneself. There has to be some patience for, for yourself as well. Because I think for all of us, we're, we're doing our best to, um, uh, to understand ourselves and, and, and what makes us work and, and where our values are at. And then also how to carry through those things. I think, so I'm going to jump to the extreme of, you know, if you're in a situation where what your values are and what you're doing are just completely in conflict, you know, like they're just like, say, let's say you work for it, you know, a, 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 a company or an organization that, you know, hands down is just doing things that you just don't agree with whatsoever. Um, you know, those kinds of situations. Um, I'm not telling anyone to quit their jobs or anything, but I do think that there's varying levels of how much we're uh, willing to sort of make a sacrifice for that, which is important to us. You know, for instance, my story of, of, you know, the golf course situation. Um, I, I quit my job after one day, um, because I could, I didn't have a family to support. There was an other conflicting values in the mix there at that point in time. Um, and so I was able to, to do that in that situation. Um, but there may be times in the future, um, or there may be moments for all of us when we need to actually make some life corrections because a value is so important to us that it needs to be expressed. And so I think, it, I think in all situations, which is what we're going to go to next, is that it's helpful for us to constantly go back and to ask what our values are, our values are and to reevaluate them um, and, uh, and, and to go through that process over and over again and to keep rediscovering how those things look in our life. So that's what I want to dive in. So Kirsten, just a heads up, we're going to finish here soon. So I don't know how close you are, um, mm -hmm. but we're just going to go through this last section here and we're going to talk about, um, so how do we discover our values? And I think just to make this really simple, I think there's three easy steps that we can go through. Um, number one being uh, this process of discovery. And this is where we can just practically sit down in whatever space we feel most comfortable in and uh, just start of creating a short list of values, which is practically what you've been doing for the last little while, uh, Kirsten, is just actually creating a list of values. Um, so taking yourself so, some time for yourself to ask a question, make a list, um, and asking what, what values are most essential to my life. Um, what was a, a meaningful moment? That's a good thing to draw upon in my life where I saw my values in action um, or, or my values were, what were my values that were honoring this moment? And then uh, what, uh, was there a time when uh, I got angry or frustrated about something? Why? So that sometimes drives us to, you know, uh, figure out what our values are as well. And then asking ourselves, what's most important in life? Like what values need to be honored? And if they're not honored, then I'll sort of feel myself wither away, like that, that I'll, I'll sort of feel a part of myself dying in a sense. So that's, that would be step number one, would be a process of sort of discovery, taking some time to reflect. Two would be a process of definition. So putting these values into your own words. And that's kind of what we're going to do next here, Kirsten, once we ask you is, you know, how would you define how these things look in your own life in a sense? <clears throat> what, how do you see them expressed? And then last of all, would be a process of testing them out. So practicing our values, seeing if they actually stick, walking them out, evaluating them at the same time, um, noticing ourselves when we're under pressure, do our values still stick in those moments or does other things pop up? Or uh, over time, do I continue to show a pattern on these values in my life? So even the conversation that we have tonight with Kirsten, um, I would still always encourage you to continue to sort of test these values and to walk them out and see if they're actually true or not. So let's take some time and uh, let's see what our uh, panelists 
has come up with this evening. And uh, so, yeah, why don't you read for us? What were the top values for you, Kirsten? Okay. Um, yeah. So I, I'll get, I'll share them. I'm just like looking at this. This is definitely something that like I'm going to take home with me <laughs> and continue yeah. to work through. Cause I'm sure. Yeah. Like it's one of those things where I'm happy with this, but I don't think I've quite landed yeah. on everything. Right. And this is yep. something that, yep. um, I guess the state of life where I'm at, that's yep. kind of part of what I'm figuring out. So that's, and that's really good to recognize that, that, and I think for some people too, like I know when Janelle did this, Janelle it took you forever to do this <laughs> assessment because you just needed more time to process stuff. But like, you know, you were just thinking through more things. As for where me, I'm like, boop, 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 you know what I mean? Like, I'm just like, so it's super, out. yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. I, don't, I don't know where to put these things. <laughs> yeah. I value them, yeah. but are they like my top values, you know? Yeah, fair yeah. enough. So I think it's good to recognize that, that it is, it is a process. So, sorry. Yeah, no, so I, I get you, Janelle. I'm, I'm there with you. Um, <laughs> So I guess my top eight you want first? Yeah, let's, let's try that. Um, so I guess I put, um, at the top I put integrity, authenticity, and loyalty, which okay. to me kind of have a lot of overlap um, in how that would be lived out or perceived by other people. Okay. And then I did um, contribution, making a difference in the lives of others. And then uh, friendships, self-respect, uh, tolerance, and service were okay. my top. Okay. So let's start with the top three. Where mm -hmm. are some of the areas that you see those things expressed in your life? Or has there been moments where those things have been in, in like a tension, like that you've gotten angry about those things maybe? Like tell us a little bit about how you see those expressed. Um, it's interesting because I've always thought of myself as someone who doesn't care what other people think. And I would okay. say that that's generally true. Like at the bottom of my list would be prestige. Like. Okay. Um, my ranking, that kind of thing. And so okay. coming to that understanding with like integrity is a lot of based on what other people think of you and how mm -hmm. you're perceived by others. Um, and so I've wrestled with that a little bit in my life and I've kind of come to the understanding for me that it's a lot about the close people in my life in that close circle and then feeling at peace with myself, like mm -hmm. whether I feel that who mm -hmm. I'm just like who I'm living out, who I am is actually um, okay. who I am inside. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, so that's been kind of that I want to be known for being true to my word and being um, honorable and, and respected. It's, yeah. Those are important. To me. Yeah. So um, if Mike's an old person mm -hmm. then that makes you a younger person, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, like, so tell us about how, what are some of the ways that you see these values sort of expressed in your career? Like you work at the church, um, you have a certain position right now. I'm guessing you, you don't want to be the position that you are in forever. Um, uh, but maybe for right now, do you see mm -hmm. some of these hitting on what you do? And then maybe s talk a little bit about how you'd love to see, you know, some of these things grow into a possible career. Um, I think even just the stereotypes of working at a church, um, the way that's perceived by people, I mm -hmm. think a lot of those things are good things. Like they, mm -hmm. they're essentially good Christian character things that we should all be striving for. I think sometimes when you say, uh, you work at a church, like, so for example, right now I'm in the process of looking for an apartment. And so it looks really good on a a rental application to write down that I'm working at a church. It, it gives oh, yeah, me an okay. edge on other people sure. my age, right? Yeah. So like she's safe. She probably goes to bed at yeah. 7 p.m. every night. Yeah, you know, exactly. Like she's, she's, she's probably a good one to get to rent our, yeah. Yeah, okay. exactly. Yeah. And, and so then how does that transfer into my life? Like, obviously, I'm not going to bed at 7 p.m. and I'm not. <laughs> what? And, yeah, what? I know. <laughs> um, but how does that, like, how do some of those expectations transfer into my life? And so yeah. it's been a way to challenge myself into how do I perceive myself on social media? How do I, um, hmm. am I perceived by others in, in yeah. the world around me, whether they're believers or non-believers? Because especially mm -hmm. for some of those non-believing um, people in my life who are close to, it can be kind of dicey to, to be welcoming, but also for that not to be a turnoff, right? Of yeah. um, the expectation that comes with. 
Yeah. Trick employee. Yeah. There was one value that stood out to me, tolerance. Mm. Ex- maybe just expound on that one a little bit more. Where that comes from, why that's a value, how you see that expressed. Because that can be a little bit of a buzzword right now in our culture. Right. Um, I, I would say for me, it often comes out in frustration of intolerance. Um, okay. Whether that's through like some of these where we think of cultural hot button, hot button topics um, where I see intolerance towards that. Um, I, I push against that, that intolerance and, and strive to be the absolute opposite. Um, and I don't think in a negative way, but I want um, to be open. I want to be that person that someone can, can wrestle through things with and not, and not fear judgment or not fear mm. um, reprimand or that kind of stuff. Yeah. And I want to be able to hear uh, what other people are thinking, believing. I don't want to get trapped in an idea that um, I know I have everything figured out and that there's no other ideas um, that can yeah. compare. Yeah. Right? And so I strive to listen and, and I guess right under my eight, so my number nine uh, was learning. So mm-hmm. continuing to grow and understand. Mm-hmm. And I think that those two would go uh, pretty hand in hand. Yeah. Okay. How they would display my right. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. When you look at your list of your, your top ones, um, mm-hmm. are you surprised by any of them? I don't know if surprised by any particularly, I think I'm surprised by the theme of a personal character. Like, I think it's a lot to do with my, with my character, like character development, mm-hmm. uh, personal development and not so much uh, work focused or task focused, which I think I would have in the past thought was much more prevalent in my life. Yeah. Where do you think that comes from? That's an excellent question. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Yeah, I don't know. Mm -hmm. That's a good question to to ask. Because yeah, I have been, I am a task oriented person. I am like a lot of these things that I have next up are like challenging and being efficient and being organized and, yeah. and that kind of stuff. But, but I think in the last couple of years, some of these uh, character ones have pushed their way to the top. So yeah, that's interesting to yeah. think where that kind of came from. Yeah. All right. Let's jump to the very end mm-hmm. of your list. The things that you value the least. I'm just curious yeah. to know, like sort of like the opposite person of, of you, you know, like the sort of like antithesis of you, what would that person look like? And, and tell us why you, you didn't value those things as much. Okay. Yeah. So um, kind of at the top of my list is uh, artistic expression and aesthetics. Um, and then prestige, like ranking, wealth, status, that kind of stuff, location, um, peace, uh, recognition, and conformity would be okay. my bottom ones. Uh, the one that stood out to me actually was location. So it talks about preferring a specific place, a neighborhood, a country that matches your lifestyle. And as soon as I picked that, I realized how fitting that was. Um, I moved around quite a bit as a kid. I didn't grow up in Manitoba solely. Uh-huh. And so to realize that I, I don't think I gained that attachment uh, to a place as kind of in those formative years. And so it's interesting to see that maybe that's the reason that that one um, has kind of gone yeah. to the bottom and, and dipped yeah. down there. And so it's interesting yeah. to see yeah. some of that. All right, here's my last question for you. Um, mm-hmm. So you have a degree in missions. Yeah. I'm, I, I'm, there's probably a better way to say that technically. Um, how do you feel like your degree fits in with some of your values or your values help inform maybe why that degree was something you went for? Hmm. I think in helping with missions in the way I want to do, to me, integrity and authenticity right up at the top there is kind of integral for, for that ministry. Mm -hmm. Um, It's really, to me, it seems hard to build relationships without that. And I believe that evangelism is hard without relationship. Mm -hmm. And so I think that a lot of that is the first step in that. And so maybe that's, yeah. part of that connection. So uh, just a funny observation here. You said that location mm-hmm. 
mm -hmm. uh, was one of your lowest values. Mm -hmm. So that, that's why, that's one reasons why I ask is for me, that's also one of my least values is location. Yeah. I could live and call anywhere home and mm -hmm. which has made it possible for me to be able to do missions for 12 years. Cause I literally called anywhere home, yep. <laughs> whether that was like a train station <laughs> or the streets of Poland or, you know, like it was yeah, like, put uh, me in a bus. I don't care. Just, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll make home out of any place that, that the home is literally where I'm at, like in this moment kind of thing. Yep. Yep. Exactly. That's cool. Well, I think we're going to end it up there. And I just want to say thanks so much for all of our um, attendees who came out this evening. And thanks to you guys as our participants who uh, showed up and I uh, fired some pretty hard questions at, and you guys had some really great, answers and I hope this was really beneficial and I just want to continue to encourage anyone out there that um, that uh, if you haven't had a good solid heart check in a while of what your values are what you're all about maybe just sit down and just do a little bit of soul searching heart searching Bible searching and um, start asking yourself your questions what do you really value what do you want to be known for what are you all about so um, yeah thanks everyone for coming out tonight and uh, we're gonna end it there have a great night, everyone.